This book is called Pandemic. It was published last year. It's written by Jackie French and illustrated by Bruce Watley. They've produced quite a few books together. Um, Pandemic, well, the title kind of says it all. Pandemic. Perhaps the Spanish flu began in an army camp in Kansas in 1917 or 1918. No one knows for sure. The war carried the flu across the world and when the war ended, the soldiers brought it home. The flu crept from house to house, leaping from a stranger's cough at a football match, sneaking through classrooms, lurking on door handles a sick person had touched. Faces grew masks. The doors of shops, theatres and schools wore signs declaring them closed. So this happened in the early 1900s. Sounds very familiar though, doesn't it? The land itself seemed lonely as grown-ups vanished, trying to stop the virus from spreading. Dogs wandered deserted streets, chickens clucked, unfed. Families nursing a sick person drew their curtains together to say their house was quarantined. But the woman, who'd one day be my great-grandma, spoke to the children from families that had escaped infection. People can't get better if they're hungry, she said, and cows must be milked and dogs fed. Brothers and sisters grabbed their bicycles or ponies to travel the empty land to help. Teddy and Aria milked mournful cows whose owners were too weak to tend them. They wheeled big milk urns from house to house, filling jugs or billies to be left in the shade by back doors. Leo and Tom fed the dogs, even Mr McTavish's bang, carefully. Hens clucked contentedly as Mabel and Ayla fed them and collected their eggs. Jack and Amelia checked the cattle, sheep and horses and made sure wombats hadn't pushed holes in the fences where the lambs might escape. Hamish, Toby and Nina weeded gardens and picked all the ripe fruit and vegetables that would have gone to waste. They carted them back to my great-grandma's place and her big copper tub where she made vast stews, potato and leek soup, soft banana custard and lemon barley water to soothe sore throats. Thelma and Bryce helped mix the scones they hitched their pony to the cart and delivered food to the saucepans left on the doorsteps and verandas of those in need. Hearts need food too, my great-grandma said, as she picked sprigs of Daphne and roses from the rambler along the fence. Every home was given books, newspapers or magazines, and soup, fruit, eggs, milk and lemon barley water with a flower on top. One by one, the quarantine curtains opened. People had kept apart long enough so the flu could no longer spread. It starved and dwindled, and finally it vanished. All across the world. The big celebration party in 1920 had lamingtons, fairy cakes, jellies and ice cream brought in from the city in big canvas bags of dry ice. And the town, on the town hall, hung a giant sign for every kid who'd ridden their bicycle or pony to help day after day along deserted roads. Thank you, it said. Quarantine and kindness had won. Now there's a fairly large blurb in the back here by Jackie French and Bruce Watley, the illustrator, and she gives a definition of epidemics and pandemics, or epidemics that, are, uh, that affect epidemics and pandemics, or which, which are, ep, ep, oh my goodness, which are epidemics that affect countries in the world all at once. And they're common. They've been there before. And she's written her final paragraph I really like. We will always have new epidemics as infections evolve and change and new ones spread from animals to humans. But we will always have kindness too and that ancient way to stop disease spreading. Quarantine. So it does end. Kindness doesn't end, but the quarantine will.